Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Since the nuclear holocaust, 20 years have passed. The leader of the Yurak monarchy, the powerful Euro-Afro-Asian unity who pressed the fatal button, claims to have won the conflict. But planet Earth has been reduced to a garbage-strewn radioactive desert, inhabited by humans devoid of all hope for a future. That thing back there was a cyborg, half man, half robot. I don't have time to jaw with anyone who won't identify himself. <laughs> And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for disc number 26 of the 88 Films Italian Collection. We are looking at 2019 after the fall of New York. It was directed by Sergio Martino. According to the 88 Films website blurb, it says, After the bomb drops, the world is divided into two factions. On the one side are the evil Eurex, and on the other, the Pan-American Confederacy. Parseval, played by Michael Swapsky of Blast Fighter, is sent by the President of the Confederacy, played by Edm Edmund Purdom of Absurd or Pieces, into the wasteland that was once New York, in an effort to rescue the last fertile female on the planet, the beautiful Gaiara, played by Valentine Mornier of Monster Shark. Extracting the key to mankind's survival will not be easy, as they battle mutants, the treacherous Confederacy personnel and the lethal Eurex that infest the barn and brutal landscape. Sergio Martino delivers one of Italian exploitation cinema's finest post-apocalyptic entries with 2019 after the fall of New York. A gung-ho, blood-splattered tale of one man's quest for humanity's holy grail. Discover this gem in pristine HD thanks to the trash-loving 88 films. The special features on the disc include a brand new high-definition restoration from the original negatives, uncompressed English soundtrack, newly created English subtitles, After the Fall, an interview with Sergio Martino, The Art of the Fall, The Magic of An Antonio Glenley, um, All the Colours of Martino, one of Italy's most revered genre filmmakers, gives a frank interview about the wild and wonderful career, which is a limited booklet, and uh, notes taken by Callum Waddle, uh, and a reversible sleeve with alternative art. The region code for this one is B, um, so it is region locked to the UK and the Europe's. So, yeah, there we go. That is it. Uh, that spills it out. Um, I was giddy like a schoolgirl on the last Italian Collections episode. You must have heard me. The movie we watched, I wasn't overly keen on. But then I read this synopsis and my, my, my nipples got all tingly. And I was like, yeah, let's do this one. This one sounds like a fucking bonkers ripoff of Escape from New York. And it kind of is, but it's so much more, dear listeners. Um... It, it goes into levels of Mad Max uh, incredulity and uh, there's there's bits of, oh, there's bits of fucking everything in this movie. It's wonderful. It's like a weird episode of Monkey, the fucking action TV show with the bad dubbing. Um, monkey magic! You, you know the one I'm on about. Uh, it is monkey magic indeed, but there, there's levels of that. At times, this could there could be stunt doubles from the Power Rangers in the background, 
we have this kind of post-apocalyptic Mad Max, uh, Mad Max slash Turbo Kid era world where people race and those that race get the women and get the tokens from weird mechanical dummies. Um, and our hero, <laughs> our hero, so to speak, Percival, um, is like the, the best rider on the planet. And he is he's kidnapped uh, against his will and taken to an ice space station, maybe, maybe that's where he is, some sort of space station ice thing, um, and he meets Edmund Purdom, who is the president of the Confederacy, who basically tells him, listen, we have this impossible mission, but we have to try, there's this one last fertile woman on the planet, and the evil guys have got them, this woman potentially has, and then they go into some dodgy um, biology, Thousands of eggs inside her, which will create thousands of humans. That's technically not how it works. Um, I'm sorry to break that to you, Edmund, but that is not how biology works. But anyway, um, yeah, so, like, mankind, after this horrible accident that's happened, has been left uh, barren in more than one ways, if you know what I mean. The testicles are not doing what they should be doing. Uh, wombs are not able to produce what they should be producing. And the world is a big, dusty dust bowl of a wasteland um, and yeah so uh, he's sent off to to get her, he's given two like sidekicks which one of them really made me laugh quite a bit uh, if I'm honest um, he's like uh, this is, the str what, his name is Ratchet I think, this is Ratchet he is the strongest man known to mankind and I'm like I'm sure he is um, and there's, there's, I mean, they they stick to it's also actually got shades of Conan the Destroyer, not the Barbarian. Conan the Destroyer. There's shades of that in this movie, um, kind of dotted all over the place. I don't know of the chronology of when that one came out, but uh, I get a feeling that someone watched it for this one. So you've got a bit of that as well, kind of salt and sandals, sci-fi, futuristic, post-apocalyptic, all flung in a blender here. So yeah, they basically head off. Um, the the villains in this movie are fucking amazing. The what are they called the Urix, uh, are, are are wonderfully kind of moustache twilling villains. Um, and yeah, we head in there. We we do what we need to do. Uh, meanwhile, the the like meet up with this kind of mutant mutant man. Is that how we would describe him? Whose mutation appears to be that he's a bit hairier than most men, but he's a fucking giant. And um, yeah, this continues on. They they do these. To be honest, this movie is unremarkable in its in its delivery of its story because you've seen this movie just done a hundred times better elsewhere. But I would argue just never done as fucking entertaining as this. And yeah, they eventually find the woman. Um, there's a whole bit of to and fro with the the kind of hairy guy who. In this movie, just rapes this unconscious woman, and the movie's fine with that. Um, I will be honest, I wasn't expecting it, and tonally nowadays, I don't think anyone would be over the moon with it, but in the context of this movie, it's a good thing, because he might be the only fertile man left. I don't know, it's all dodgy. I, I will be honest, watching it, I felt a little bit uncomfortable, um, and that I felt that this was a sort of scene that you would just never see nowadays, uh, and rightly so, rightly so, um, it's just, it's not, it's not cool, uh, but yeah, um, and what's even kind of weirder about this one is Percival seems to know it, and Percival seems to have set it up, and he is our hero, uh, and ultimately they, they manage to escape with the girl, very much like Escape from New York, uh, no one expects Percival to survive, in fact, they're kind of hoping that he won't, uh, Ratchet, his, his kind of strong man friend, turns out to be a fucking cyborg, and this big reveal, which is shocking, I think, maybe, didn't shock me, uh, made me laugh a little bit, because he's, he's pretty shit as a cyborg, um, it's like once he's discovered, he becomes mortal again, and he can get kicked over and shit, weird, uh, but yeah, he ultimately ends up back at the president, the president says, you know, things didn't turn out to plan, but at least he got this this girl, and then the president says he's too ill to travel, and the end of this movie, I shit you not, is a Thunderbirds-esque sort of platform of little, um, little models as they blast off into space to start a new life for humanity, question mark, confused symbol, ultra-confused emoji, Duncan sits back in his chair smiling. Um... 
Yeah, this movie is fucking hilarious. So entertaining. So entertaining. It's the sort of weird balls to the wall lunacy that you can expect from uh, you know a part of the world that just at this point doesn't have an original idea at all. They're just clambering for anything they can make a movie out of. Anything at all. Like what, what scored? What, what did well in America? Or oh, well, they did a movie with Kurt Russell about him going in to rescue the president in New York. Right, we'll take that. What else is huge? Well, Mad Max. You know, the, the Road Warrior was this great movie, and everyone loved it. Like, That's what do they have? Buggies. Let's get buggies in there and cars that we have to build up. What else is good? Well, people sometimes like science fiction movies, like Alien. Right, let's bring them in. Like it's mutants. Let's do all this. It is this hodgepodge fucking cauldron of nonsense. But I'll be lying if I said I did not smile all the way through it. It's cheesy as fuck. The dialogue is awful. But everyone is acting so serious in this movie. Like, they are going for the fucking Oscar. And God bless you, every single one of you. Let me salute you, dear actors of 2019 after the fall of New York. The cut of this movie, the restoration, is the tits. This might be the best restoration I've seen um, from 88 films. Maybe alongside something like Absurd, which I thought was a really good print as well, or Short Night of Glass Dolls. This is a great print. They've cleaned up really well. It looks modern. It looks fresh. It looks vibrant. The soundtrack in this movie is catchy as balls. You, you know, it's going to stick in your head like a weird fucking cockroach and lay little fucking cockroach babies are just going to infest your brain with joy and not lunacy. Um, yeah, it's it's so much fun. I, I, I was over the moon with this. This is what I want from movies like this. I think sometimes in the E.T. collection for the, the, the Italian movies in particular, I think at times there's been this idea of well, they're really going for something serious. And some of those police procedurals have worked really well and other ones have not because whilst they're getting some things right, they're just not entertaining. They're just not keeping my interest. It's like they've kind of got lost in the idea of how to copy something. This is the best form of, of copying or plagiarism. This is taking about seven different ideas and just melding them together and making it work. For all its absurdity, it actually really works as a point A to point B film. It tells the story exactly like it should. It doesn't throw anything unpredictable, which might be a slight against it, but at the same time, there's something wholly rewarding about going through the entire experience of the movie. I just sat smiling and enjoy. I mean, I don't know what else you can want from a movie like this. Um, Sergio Martino, once again, proves to me that he is maybe one of the most underappreciated genre directors ever. I mean, this man has turned his hand to pretty much everything. He's done comedies, he's done jelly, he's done um, sci-fi stuff, he did action. Remember when we looked at um, Hands of Steel? So he's done action. He's done, like, everything. This guy has done everything. I think he took a turn at Spaghetti Westerns at some point. And everything we've seen thus far of him, the, the kind of go-away sort of thought on his movie making is that he is a fucking great director with a great eye. He really knows how to, to you know, you get your bang for your buck in a Martino movie. And I think that's, I think that's a, a trait that some of his peers um, and some of the, the directors that came after him maybe don't have in spades. Uh, so they have the ability to make, but they don't necessarily have the ability to stand out in genres that are already populated by so many uh, people doing similar things. For some reason, you can sit down, you could almost show me any Martino film and I would know straight away that's a Martino film. Just in the, the way the cinematography, that eye is captured on screen. It's, it's really fucking phenomenal. And um, if you were lucky enough, like I was, to get one of the first runs with the limited edition book set um, that came with the, the Blu-ray. There was a great interview um, and notes by Cal Model, but the interview's fucking brilliant with, with Martino, uh, as well as, you know, like the actual interview on the disc as well is, is really good. He's, and what I like about him is he's very frank about things without necessarily being blunt. He just gets to the point, tells you what he feels, and I, I, think, that, I think that stands him in good stead. And I feel the longer we move on, the more of these movies become available, the more people are starting to realise how great Sergio Martino actually is. Um, 
Torso is the one that everyone reaches for, but the man has a plethora of fucking amazing movies out there that are not that difficult to get a hold of now. We're in this wonderful world now that we don't have to struggle that much to get what we want. Um, it's kind of amazing. So, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say. I mean, this one scores high for me, but remember, Netflix ratings on podcasts under the stairs do not denote expertise and quality. It denotes them feels. It's all about them feels. And um, one has hated it, two has didn't like it, three has liked it, four has really liked it, and five has loved it. And there's no way I can't give this a four. It's, I really liked this movie. It was a fucking ball. Absolute ball. Interestingly enough, people will say, Duncan, this is cheesy. Duncan, this is not good. How can you give a one to a movie like Don't Go In The Woods Alone uh, like you did on Slasher Classics this week? And then this week, pretend that this movie is some sort of fucking masterpiece. Um, like I said on Facebook, give me Italian cinema, uh, the, even the junky Italian cinema, over the junk American kind of slasher genre any day of the week because Italy always put a bit more into it and there's always something even if it's just one scene or one shot and all these movies where I'm like that was really fucking cool or I've never seen that before or that's really thinking outside the box or I wonder how they did that and that's what they have um, so yeah it's a 4 out of 5 for 2019 after the fall of New York guys get on this one I think it is on YouTube not that I'm advocating that I would say buy it on Blu-ray but if you really are stuck for pennies and stuff the entire version of it is on YouTube and you will laugh yourself blind um, is, is that fucking funny <laughs> 